Hi everyone, it's Dante. Today I'm going to talk about how to spot and stop narcissists in their tracks. This is an increasing awareness in our world that narcissists are out there and really we've allowed narcissists to occupy great positions of power for a long time. So all of this talk about narcissists is a big part of the change and shift away from letting that energy play out and letting people who have this domineering energy really be in power. So narcissists and empaths are perfect matches for each other. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. But if you are a more sensitive type and you are considering yourself a healer or somebody who feels a lot of other people's energies, you are very likely to find yourself to be a match with narcissists at different points in your life. Now, it can be very hard to spot a narcissist because there's so many different kinds of narcissism. And some um, psych notes out there describe in detail many different types, and mostly I'm going to be talking just about two types of narcissism to keep it simple. Um, but within those two, there's many different variations. So first of all, what does it feel like to be around a narcissist? Before we get into all the definitions, I want to talk about what is this feeling in the body? And initially, it usually comes with this sense of perhaps being star-shocked, where you feel like, oh my god, wow, this person, they're so heavenly, they're so delightful. I feel so blessed and privileged to be around this person. So this is the way that narcissists tend to conduct their energy and create their field and create their life is so that other people become easy to manipulate because they present such a huge over-the-top appearance. And when you're around these people, it will feel like, ooh, like you're, you're falling into them almost. Um, narcissist, to be around narcissists also can come up with this sense of maybe an anxiety or an anxious attachment. Uh, many narcissists themselves have anxious attachments styles where they really um, feel they need this constant validation. Um, but they also perpetuate that in those around them. It can feel as if you really need to work to maintain this connection with this person. It can feel like there's this sort of siphon on your energy where this person is subtly sucking energy from you and that you have to work to maintain your validation from them. Um, so narcissists see everything from this sense of social hierarchy, where some people are better, some people are, worse, are less than. And without saying it, they cast this dynamic where we have to prove ourselves in the social hierarchy to maintain our connection with them. And this usually feels uh, quite a bit sticky. So the overall emotional feel connected with narcissism is deep insecurity. And when you feel this deep insecurity in your relationships with somebody, there can be many reasons for it, though it will most certainly be there when you're engaging with a narcissist. So what are the typical traits of narcissism? It's an over-aggrandized sense of self. I am so great, I'm so good, and I need to present this image out into the world. It is a sense of entitlement, a feeling that they deserve all of the energy and time or resources from everyone around them without having to do anything because they are so great. It's a sense of um, superiority, again, feeling like they're above others. Now, it goes even further, and what makes somebody certainly a narcissist, having narcissistic personality disorder, is having those first things and having a total lack of sensitivity and empathy for others. And this is where it can get tricky, 
especially in this healing light work field, because there are so many people out there who learn about all of these keywords like empathy, light work, and they learn how to play the role of being empathic and sensitive, but they actually, when you really connect with their energy, you can feel that they don't care and they're presenting that image. That's when we get into the realm of vulnerable narcissists. And so I'll talk more about that later. Though, in general, yes, these narcissists have no sensitivity to others and they genuinely don't care what impact they have on other people and their feelings unless that loops back around and starts to impact their own um, reputation, which is the most important thing of all. They manipulate people and they gaslight people, but you won't see this first of all. So the first thing that you'll note when to spot the narcissist is love bombing. And the love bombing is this sort of very over the top kind of energy where they are validating you and they're saying such great things about you and they're giving you this and they're telling you that you should be a part of their friend group or their circle or their spiritual community or their cult. Um, but giving you this sense that you're so loved and with time, one de begins to develop this sense of, is this genuine love or is this love that is leading to this sort of hook to pull you in? And I think experience is the best way to learn this. Um, and maybe I'll have some more words on how to, to tell the difference as we go through the video, though that love bombing is a very key sign of narcissism, that they just want to make you feel um, kind of like that starstruck feeling and that awe and wonder, like, oh, wow, like, I'm special enough to be a part of this special group of people. And so, yes, the last signs are the manipulation and gaslighting. And a gaslight, again, is when you tell someone some story that's different than what actually happened. You project a reality onto them. You convince and confuse them. And by telling them a different narrative of what happened or what the relation is. And narcissists love to use this tactic because it's an amazing way to guarantee perpetual allegiance. And once they start to see that people will believe their story before they believe reality, it lets them become great pawns of the narcissist. So narcissists can be hard to defeat alone because they tend to have many pawns or subordinates in their circle. Um, and because the narcissist sees everything through this lens of social hierarchy, they tend to have many followers but few friends. The narcissist will only develop very close friendships and bonds with people they see as at their level. So they have this sense of, okay, people, maybe people who are intelligent or people who are good looking or people who are experienced or learned or educated, whatever it is, are at this level and I'm at this level. Therefore, the only people that I can have really, truly close to me are people who are also at this level. But then you'll see that with these relationships the narcissist has is that there's still a deep sense of insecurity within all of those relations. And if you learn how to see past the outer appearance that people want to show and present and feel into what's really in their inner world, you will always feel that all of this is a big protection. It's like a huge armor that the narcissist puts on in order to um, protect themselves from this deep sense of insecurity, this deep sense of shame, this deep sense of unworthiness they feel at a core level. So when engaging with someone that you feel is a narcissist, the most important thing to do is to 
protect yourself. It's to recognize that most of these people won't change until they experience something that forces them to change. Narcissists who are in positions of power most likely won't change because there's never going to be a great enough threat to their well-being that will force them to look at their stuff. However, if it turns out that there comes to be an obstacle to, for them to really get what they want or that by some stroke of um, divine inspiration that their true well-being becomes their priority, they may start to heal. The most important thing to note is that while many narcissists may claim they want to heal, um, we cannot be the healers for them. And those of us who are empaths or very sensitive tend to get into the trap of being with somebody who's narcissistic and feeling as if we have to heal them and we have to make them better. Um, if we get very close to a narcissist, we might see the areas where they hold still great pain and try to help them with it, um, as that is the nature of somebody who is empathic. Or um, I would also say codependent, that what we see as being described as empaths out there now are actually um, leaning into more of this realm of codependency. And there's a huge correlation with empaths and codependency. You can heal from codependency and have still a highly empathic sense, activity to others. Though a lot of what people are promoting about, you, you're an empath, I'm an empath, is just kind of broadcasting the message actually like, I'm codependent and I feel great about that. So watch out for empaths as well. Um, they're not as harmful, but they can still be this looping vortex into a lot of insecurity. So this is what narcissists and empaths have in common, is that they have huge insecurity. The narcissist, on one hand, compensates for that insecurity by presenting the image to the world of, here I am, I'm so great. And the empath deals with their insecurity by proving their worth through being of service to others of assisting others, of being there for others. So what creates an empath or a narcissist? A narcissist is created through um, a parent who holds them to very incredibly high standards, who forces them to make sure they get the best grades possible, who limits their social time or their play time to put them in all of the extracurricular activities on top of getting the best grades and doing everything, they're primed to be an overachiever. And if they don't do well, their sense of worth is deprived. Um, narcissists can also be those who get... Yeah, it's created through that sense of very inconsistent validation and high standards. Yet the more... Um, there's other types of narcissism that can be created in other ways and are perhaps created through parents who withdraw their attention very much and don't pay any attention to children. And the children then have to present um, something to them to prove to the world that they are okay, they are great. Um, an empath is created by Parents who use their children for emotional support. And that isn't to say that every parent is directly being using the child like as a therapist and telling them all their problems, though that does happen. For me, that did happen. And I was in this empath codependent conditioning, pairing up with many narcissistic people for a lot of my 20s. And I went through a really deep healing process of speaking out against some of these people and um, watching a lot of videos, doing therapy sessions, uncovering and excavating, wow, what was there? Why was that there? And other ways that parents use their children as emotional support is to make everything about them, to, to make it about, for example, in my childhood, um, 
because my parents were divorced, I had different times with both parents. I wasn't allowed to really have my kid time just doing what I wanted to do as a kid, which was hang out with my friends at a certain point. It was like with my um, one parental figure, oh, but you're only with me every other weekend, so you can't do what you want to do. You have to come be with me. Um, and I got this message in so many other ways. It's basically like mm, parents who need their child to be something for them rather than the parent showing up as a parent to the child. And children who receive this in any way become codependent or empaths. Um, parents who are very inconsistent can also lead to creating children who are empaths. And this is important to note. Maybe you start to hear some of the backstory of people more, and that can kind of confirm, hmm, is this person a narcissist? Is this person a codependent empath? And it also helps you to see into, okay, well, within this person, there's a lot of insecurity. So the remedy is actually to have empathy. And it's one of the most challenging things to do, to have empathy for someone who doesn't have empathy. Now, taking a step back, the best way to uh, stop a narcissist in their tracks is um, it's most important not to combat the narcissist, but to protect yourself. Recognize, is this narcissist a person in a place of power? Despite how they behave, do they still have this reputation where they could use their power against me? Because in those situations, it doesn't actually serve you to combat the narcissist and recognize that a lot of these people will have a very hard time changing. So make the priority protecting yourself. Um, one of the most common narcissistic traits is a harsh avoidance of criticism or feedback. So this in and of itself can be a way to protect yourself from narcissists and also get a sense into how narcissistic a person really is. Now, for one, criticism is a sort of suppressive energy in its own right, and we don't need to be in a world where we're critical of ourselves and others. Instead, it's about noticing blind spots and giving feedback about how one can improve. But even a narcissist doesn't want to hear how they can improve. They want to hear that they're already perfect. So in the most gentle way possible, suggesting an area where someone could improve and seeing can they receive that. And if you do this consistently enough, um, that will be enough to kind of push that person away. Um, the most important thing to do is to remember again that you're not there to fix the narcissist and that despite whatever grandiose promises they offer you, that they're going to bring you so much abundance in your life or this or that or wisdom in your life because uh, of how great they are and your connection to them is going to offer that. Mm -hmm. Remember that you can experience all of those great things within yourself. Remember that you can bring your energy back into your center and that there's so many other people that can offer you the things the narcissist is claiming they can offer you, but in a healthier way. To get out of an entanglement with a narcissist is a more complex situation, and maybe that'll be the subject of another video. Um, this is a, more about recognizing. And so now we get into the realm where it becomes tricky to recognize this covert narcissist. Um, covert or vulnerable narcissist. I like the term vulnerable narcissist the most because these narcissists present their vulnerability. They show the insecurity that they're a little bit more than the grandiose, more common type of narcissist. The vulnerable narcissist is especially common in the spiritual field. Um, Teal Swan is an amazing example. These kinds of narcissists will seek to, they'll need a lot of alone time. They need to spend a lot of time processing. They um, avoid situations in which they're really exposed. And so you might only see them with the very same inner circle again and again. You won't see them out in public unless it's one of their events or something that puts them in the spotlight. Um, these kinds of narcissists 
will tell perhaps a story of their victimization or this a story of the shame they experience or a story of this or that thing. And it's essentially a way for them to gain trust and to make themselves relatable so as to perpetuate their own um, p positions of power and their own love and validation. Um, so these narcissists tend to get away with things for much longer because after a situation in which they've caused harm to another, um, they are more likely to open up about it and admit to it. And they can tell these grand stories of how um, ashamed they felt and how sad they felt and how, um, how bad they feel about it. Though, if you really listen to these people as they share this, you can feel at a certain level that it is a lot more about them and their pain is so much more about them and their embarrassment and their fear of losing their reputation than it is about feeling how they impacted other people. Um, to the narcissist, other people are always secondary. And to really break free um, from any of these narcissists, we have to understand that the best thing we can do for them is to confront them with the harsh mirror of who they really are instead of reflecting to them what they want us to reflect back. We're in this world where so many narcissists are in positions of power and it's going to take a lot of work for us to break free from it. Though the most important thing for all of us to do is to um, break free from the illusions of grandeur. Though Unfortunately, we still live in this world where there's a worship of celebrity, there's a worship of beauty, there's a worship of money, and all of these things make it so that narcissists get to perpetuate their power. In the spiritual world, so much of this is still true, and we see this with people who can profess to have these amazing, incredible powers, like Teal Swan, like Yogi Bhajan, and the real teachers are always pointing us back to the truth that the, the same powers exist within all of us, within everyone. And you can really feel, because the, the tricky thing is, is that almost everyone's going to say that, oh, it's within you. But can you feel when somebody really means that versus when somebody is saying that just to gain your trust? It's this kind of sensitivity that we need to develop. And if we find ourselves prone to narcissists, it's also important to recognize our own levels of insecurity that makes us a vibrational match to them. Remember that the empath and the narcissist are compensating for deep levels of insecurity. So you need to find ways to validate yourself and claim your own self-worth that don't involve being something and playing a role for other people. And when you are able to have intrinsic self-worth and prioritize time spent on things that are meaningful to you, it will be less easy, it'll be more difficult for you to fall into the trap of seeking worth and validation from others. So those are some great tricks to get more attuned to this. And hopefully, as all of us start to see this stuff more clearly, clearly for what it is, we can all stop the narcissists in their tracks and create a new culture in the world. The last thing I want to say is that because of the myth itself of narcissists, narcissists who falls in love with his own reflection, um, a lot of people tend to just assume narcissism has to do with admiring one's image or admiring oneself and will just point the finger on anybody at anybody who is garnering a lot of attention, though not everyone who garners attention and seeks attention is a narcissist. Actually, attention is a need. Um, we need attention. We need validation. We need people to look at us. We need affirmation. 
all of us need this. Though there's a difference between the incessant need to fill the hole that a narcissist feels versus the normal validation and approval that we all seek. The reality is, is that you can't be successful in this world without having your own back and without presenting yourself in a beautiful way and without admiring yourself to some extent. So these narcissistic traits are healthy. And so don't just assume that because somebody loves themselves, is constantly sharing pictures of themselves, or is professing good things about themselves, that they are a narcissist. Um, what you really want to look forward to thinking, ah, okay, this person is a narcissist, is the lack of sensitivity, the lack of empathy, the deep need for control, the um, gaslighting, and the love bombing, and the manipulation. Those are the components in a narcissist that are really the over-exaggeration of um, the normal seeking for validation and attention and admiration that is just a part of our psyche. Yet so many people, um, especially in the spiritual field, have come to view as bad and wrong and negative or based in ego in some way, and it couldn't be the furthest from the truth. We need each other and we need to be seen and loved. And that is a crucial part of our well-being. So please don't let anyone convince you otherwise and fall into the trap of continuing to perpetuate taboos around things that are simply basic human needs. Okay, I want to end it there for now. It was longer than I wanted it to be, but I really love to give in-depth, clear content. So I hope this was helpful for you. And let me know if you have any questions. If you like this video, um, feel free to like and subscribe. And let me know what kind of content you want me to see, you want to see me continuing to create. I'm so curious what my audience is interested in beyond the channeling that I offer. So let me know. And I look forward to hearing from you. My website is DanteStarshine.com. That you can find all of the info on my private coaching sessions and packages and the channeling course and channeling sessions and um, some more content about my book and anyway i hope you take a look and i wish you a fantastic fabulous day and i'll see you shortly in another video hopefully